In the early morning of January 27, 2016, Nicole Lovell climbed out of her bedroom window from her home in Blacksburg, Virginia to meet her new 18-year-old boyfriend. Hours later, her mom learns that she is not in her bedroom. Her window is open and a drawer was against the window sill. She immediately reports Nicole missing. After speaking with Nicole's friends, investigators learned that Nicole had planned to meet up with a boy named David. Nicole had written all her usernames and passwords to her accounts on her bedroom wall. With this information, FBI computer experts were able to trace Nicole's accounts and they quickly learned that she regularly used an app called Kick, a popular chat app where teens can communicate with others without their parents finding out. Using the IP address provided by Kick, Investigators learned that Nicole had been talking to someone with the screen name Dr. Tombstone, which quickly traced to David Eisenhower, 18, a freshman studying engineering at Virginia Tech in Blacksburg, Virginia. Let's get into it. Nicole Madison Lovell, 13, was born on May 3, 2002 in Radford, Virginia. She lived at Lateran Ridge Apartments in Blacksburg, Virginia with her mother. Nicole was a student at Blacksburg Middle School and she loved to sing and dance. Her favorite color was blue and she loved pandas. Her dream was to be a star on American Idol. Nicole was born with a rare tumor in her liver and required a transplant before her first birthday. To survive, she was taking anti-rejection medication twice daily. But the scars on her neck and stomach were a daily reminder of her treatment and caused her to be bullied. Nicole's social media posts showed she was lonely and had thoughts of suicide. She had convinced herself that nobody cared about her. She felt as if she just didn't fit in. Nicole's parents were never married, and her father left her mother a few weeks before she was born. Her relationship with her father was not that great as he stayed in trouble with the law. The attention and love that she desired from her father was just non-existent. David Eisenhower was from Columbia, Maryland and 18 years old and a freshman studying engineering at Virginia Tech when he met Nicole online and began developing a relationship with her. After months of communicating online, they decided to meet in person at a party. David realizes that Nicole is only 13. A few days later, he sends Nicole a text message saying he wanted to take a break from communicating with her and to sort out their relationship. We can stay friends, he wrote. But I can't express enough that you don't tell anyone about me because they will hurt you. Meanwhile, David is also texting another friend to say he was trying to end a relationship with a young girl, but his attempt to present a false identity had failed and the girl's friends had found him on Facebook. Prior to talking to Nicole online, David had also formed an online relationship with another juvenile in the summer of 2015 on the Kick app. They communicated daily using the app and had met in person a few times. And David had even picked her up from school and took her home. When David became involved with Nicole, he continued his relationship with the other juvenile. A month prior to Nicole's disappearance, David had shared with this juvenile that he had met a girl at a party and that she said they messed around. However, he was not sure of what had happened because he woke up after the party and found himself in a ditch on the side of the road. He tells her that the girl's name was Nicole and that he was scared Nicole would expose their relationship. He shares he plans to get rid of her and that he and a friend 
in the military were planning to murder her. Who was the friend? Natalie Keepers. Natalie Keepers was from Laurel, Maryland, and was also a freshman at Virginia Tech studying engineering. David and Natalie had met during freshman orientation and became close during their first semester. David approached Natalie during their second semester with the issues of being involved with Nicole and worried that she might be pregnant. He tells Keepers that he tried to break it off with her, but Nicole had told him that she would kill herself if he broke off their relationship. Excited to be a part of something, excited to be included, Natalie helps David come up with a plan. They decide that David would take Nicole to a remote location and slit her throat. The day before Nicole's disappearance, GPS shows the two out and about driving around looking for a place to carry out their plan. They are also seen on Walmart surveillance cameras purchasing shovels and a cleaning supplies. The day of Nicole's disappearance, David and Natalie finalized their plan while eating at Cookout in Blacksburg, Virginia. After they finish eating, David puts their plan into motion by sending Nicole a text to meet for a secret date. He drives Natalie back to campus and she goes back to her dorm room at Lee Hall, renamed 2020 Hodge Hall. He arrives at Nicole's house around 1 a.m. She grabs a bag, her cell, and her favorite minion blanket and gets into the car. They drive to Craig Creek's Road, where he and Natalie decide it would be the best place to carry out their plan. Craig's Creek Road cuts into the woods that form the George Washington and Jefferson National Forest. It sits off Route 460 and is to the north of Virginia Tech. Because it is secluded and not far, Virginia Tech students were known to camp and party in the area as well as help in cleanup projects to keep the area clean. At night, the road is extremely dark due to there are no street lights. There are some homes that sit far off the roadway, but they are spaced greatly apart. After 20 minutes, they arrive, they get out of the car, and as they are walking, David hits Nicole with the shovel, knocking her to the ground. Now, according to the medical examiner, Nicole was stabbed a total of 14 times, mostly to her head. She was also stabbed in her neck and chest. She had bruising and scrapes on her body and inside of her scalp. Even though a bone in her neck was broken, her cause of death was due to the stab wound to her neck. The medical examiner also stated that Nicole was alive at the time David had broke her neck. Eisenhower hides her body, leaves, and returns with Natalie, who helps him place Nicole in the trunk of his car. He drives back to the dorm, West Ambler Johnston Hall, as if nothing has happened. They both continue like there is not a body in the trunk of David's car. Now remember, this is January. In this particular time of year, the area was having a little snow. And the temperatures was around 22, 23 degrees. So it was quite cold. They decided that it would be okay to leave the body in the car. Because again, the temperatures were 22, 23 degrees at the most. The next day, they go out to carry out their second part of their plan. Still with no worries that the body was in the trunk, they first drove to the store to purchase cleaning wipes before they proceeded to North Carolina to dispose of, of Nicole Lovell's body. On their drive back to campus, they stop at McDonald's in Dublin, Virginia, dispose Nicole's clothes in a dumpster, wash their hands, and get a drink. While driving, they dispose the knife in a wooded area. The following day, they met at a laundromat on campus and washed their bloody clothes. Next, they drive toward the New River Valley Bridge on the Giles County, West Virginia line and toss Nicole's boots, her backpack, a small knife, and a box cutter. 
Keepers keep Nicole's minion blanket, cell phone, and charger and take them back to her dorm room as souvenirs. January 27, Nicole was reported missing. Her disappearance shocked the town of Blacksburg, Virginia. More than 1,200 gathered with a mission to find Nicole. January 28, police officers from six different agencies, the FBI Child Abduction Team, and 1,000 Virginia Tech Corps of, Cad of Cadets aided in the search of Nicole. Drones were also brought in to assist in the search. January 30, Nicole is found 90 miles away from her home in Surrey County, North Carolina. This is right at the North Carolina State borderline, two hours from Virginia Tech campus. Before they left her lifeless body on the side of the road, they took off her clothes and wiped her body down with Clorox wipes. Eisenhower is arrested due to evidence that was obtained from electronic devices and social media. David admitted to going to Nicole's home, but he said once he met her and realized that she was younger than what he expected, he gave her a side hug and he left. Eisenhower maintains he was not involved and quickly gives them information of Natalie in the hopes that she would help him prove his innocence. Instead, Natalie spills the beans once she is made aware of the evidence of the shovel purchase. And she is arrested the following day, January 31st, 2016. Natalie admitted to helping dispose, clean up, and planning the murder, but not being involved in the actual killing. David Eisenhower was charged with first-degree murder, concealing of a dead body, and abduction, and Natalie Keepers was charged with accessory before the fact. They both plead not guilty. Trial begins for David in February of 2018. After the fourth day of trial, David realized the evidence against him. He changes his plea from not guilty to no contest. Pleading no contest means that he accepts the conviction but avoids an omission of guilt. David Eisenhower was found guilty and was sentenced to 60 years for murder, 10 years for abduction, and 5 years for hiding the body. However, 25 of those years was suspended, leaving him 50 years to serve. He was also ordered to, to 20 years of probation and $5,130 in restitution. Natalie Keeper's trial started on September 17, 2018, and after a week's trial, she was also found guilty and was sentenced to 45 years in prison. Five years was suspended, leaving her to serve 40 years, and she was also given 10 years of probation. February 2020, her case was on appeal to the higher courts. Her appeal was turned down in December of that same year. David Eisenhower is currently serving his time at the Red Onion State Prison in Pound, Virginia. Natalie Keepers is currently saving her sentence at the Flavana Correctional Center for Women in Troy, Virginia. David and Natalie were promising engineering students at Virginia Tech. Keepers graduated from Hammond High School, Columbia, Maryland in 2015 and interned at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center with the dreams of having a future in aerospace and ocean engineering. She wanted to follow in her father's footsteps, who was an aerospace engineer. David graduated from Wild Lake High School also in 2015 and in Columbia, Maryland. He was a standout track and field athlete in high school and had been named Indoor Track Performer of the Year by the Baltimore Sun. He was a three-time state champion in track and finished second place in his junior and senior years in his state. He was also running track for the Virginia Tech's track team. After his arrest, Virginia Tech re released a statement confirming that he had been removed from his degree and the track team. It is greatly understandable why their parents could not understand why they made the choices they did on the night of January 27, 2016. While David's parents are silent and do not have much to say, Natalie's parents pleaded with the jury to show mercy. Mary Petit, the Virginia State Attorney for Montgomery County, stated, We all suffer with the loss of this little girl. 
I do hope that we have been able to do the best that the justice system can do to provide some resolution and some justice. The Virginia Tech Hokie family and the community came together to support each other as well as Nicole's family. Hundreds gathered to pay their respects on February 4, 2016 at the McCoy Funeral Home, Chapel, Blacksburg, Virginia. Nicole Madison Lavelle was laid to rest at the Memorial Gardens of the New River Valley, Blacksburg, Virginia. Fathers, love your daughters so that they know how they are supposed to be treated and they don't search for love all in the wrong places. David Lovell now wishes that he could have been more of a voice in Nicole's ear. Let's protect our children and not let them have unsupervised online capabilities. Parents have the responsibility to model responsible social media use for their children. Educate them on the dangers of social media. Today, our children have a host of new ways to live and new ways to die. Be aware.